Hello students and welcome to our today's lecture, BJL3204, Radio Production, Department of Journalism, School of Social Sciences. My name is Mr. Michael Mwangangi. Our lecture's objectives today, um, we want to identify characteristics of radio, understand principles of writing for radio, prepare news script for radio, and organize a newscast for radio. So on to our introduction. Working in radio entails an understanding of the nature of the medium you have chosen to work for. The medium of radio is different from a newspaper and magazine, and the writing for radio is slightly different from television. So it is important to understand the radio medium and be comfortable within the environment you have chosen. Understanding the system implies taking note of the challenges of the medium and taking full advantage of the medium to, ful to fulfill the expectations of the target audience. It is also, or rather it means, it also means taking cognizance of the shortcomings of the medium in your script so as to be able to create an unforgettable message that will help you achieve the desired goals of the program. So we are going to be able to understand all this as we move on with our different parts of our, our presentation. So let us first start by understanding what radio is. Uh, Webster dictionary defines radio as the wireless transmission and reception of electric imp impulses or signals by means of electromagnetic waves. Now, um, there are different ways that we can be able to define uh, what radio is. First, uh, you realize that if uh, we are to ask any of you, you'll say that uh, radio is just that device that you are able to receive uh, on your messages. Okay? But uh, to correctly go ahead and define what radio is, uh, you realize that uh, you love to say that it is a device that is able to uh, receive the audio uh, programs which in the process, you realize that uh, for us to be able to receive that within our gadget, there are different stages that uh, this message has to undergo. So to start with, that person who is within the studio um, has to speak, uh, has to speak on the microphone, and the microphone changes the audio or the sound into electrical signal that is processed in a different equipment or within different equipment that is being used within that studio. Then from that, that signal has to be transmitted and the transmitter there um, usually generates what we refer to it as uh, the carrier wave and uh, the audio signal is usually attached to that carrier wave that is sent within the atmosphere which is carried that is within that uh, atmosphere and received by antenna of our radio, which now again goes ahead and uh, uh, transduces or changes that into um, audio that we can be able to listen to. So on the second definition, Cambridge Dictionary defines a radio as a piece of electronic equipment used for listening to radio broadcasts. So this is just like uh, we are talking about now the device itself. At uh, our homes, even in your pocket on, uh, on your mobile phone, you can be able to receive radio. So um, that device that you are using, be it the radio set itself, it has the capability of being able to change these um, electronic uh, signals into uh, audio, um, 
rather into an audio all to sound so that we can be able to understand. Radio is the transmission of audio signals through the air. The electronic signal is changed into high frequency radio waves that travel and distance and are received by an antenna. I believe um, we have captured that up there. The antenna changes them back to the electronic signal that can be changed to sound waves by the radio speaker. So just to clarify on that, we are saying that uh, if at all we are to receive these audio signals, okay, so there must be first the signal within uh, the station where we are having our continuity announcers or news angers being picked by one of the devices that is uh, the microphone. Then this microphone goes ahead to change this um, signal into electrical signal. Now from that we are saying that uh, this, electric, um, this electrical signal which contains now the uh, radio information that has been produced within the station um, has to be now again sent through the air so that we can be able to receive that information on our radio set. So at the transmission point we are saying that there is a wave, a radio wave that is generated that uh, we are going to attach or that we are going to place now the radio audio signal that is containing the message so that now we can be able to transmit it and the process that we are going to get it at our homes is that um, we are going to use the energies that are radiating within the atmosphere and part of the electromagnetic uh, spectrum that we are going to use is what we refer to it as uh, radio waves so these radio waves are the ones that are going to carry this signal and uh, when this sing um, um, carrier wave together with uh, the, sing uh, the radio signal that is, it is carrying once it defines uh, the radio antenna um, the antenna usually separates uh, the carrier wave uh, leaving it on the atmosphere then picks uh, the radio signal so radio signal uh, goes through to uh, now the radio set which is now able to transduce or to change that electrical radio signal into sounds that we can be able to listen from the radio speakers. Uh, let's uh, look at uh, the characteristics of radio. So the following are some of the characteristics of radio as identified by MacLeish 2005. One uh, is uh, the simplicity of radio and we are saying that a uh, simplicity of radio takes uh, various forms. Um, in the first instance radio is easy to operate and as such does not require heavy equipment that is needed as compared to all other media. Now when uh, we are looking at uh, the issue of a uh, simplicity of uh, radio, for one you realize that uh, even that person who has never gone to school can be able to operate that given equipment or that given device. Uh, in another instance, it affords those working in the station to be creative and express themselves freely but taking cognizance of the acceptable on-air norms. So there are different programs that we usually receive um, through the radio and we are saying that uh, this all this um, different ways that we usually express our creativity as people who are working within this given medium. Okay, so what we are talking about here are the different formats or programme formats that we usually produce for radio. You realize that uh, there are those programs like um, the drama, the documentary, um, the yeah, and drama documentary, the news programs, and others. So when we are producing that, we are saying that we are supposed to observe uh, the recommended word on air language. Next. It's a simplicity makes the production process less cumbersome as compared to the production process in television. So again, you'll find that uh, when it comes to radio, um, what you need to have 
or the equipment that you need to have so that now you can be able to produce the, um, this different radio plonglums is are simply microphones okay and now that character or that person who is going to be giving the information and uh, probably the uh, visual or rather the audio mixer remember we are going to connect the different microphones if you are going to be having more than um, one source of audio so with that uh, if you are to compare with that with uh, other media like uh, for example television in television you require a number of um, production clue to be in place so that you can be able to produce even that uh, symbol uh, plonglam or that fairly short uh, plonglam that you wish to produce so you require like uh, for example the camera operator um, you require a bit of lighting okay you require all those microphones so all these are going to be handled by different people and on top of that you realize that you have now the talent so the other characteristic is radio is inexpensive so we are saying that uh, it is also that is a uh, radio is also financially health fast it is cheaper in terms of uh, purchasing the receiver um, now look at uh, the radio uh, set if you are to purchase then um, even that person who is so poor can be able to afford to have that device okay so with uh, for example something to do with the uh, 200 you can be able to uh, afford a fairly small uh, radio set compare that with the uh, television you require a number of uh, uh, thousands of uh, shillings for you to be able to get one secondly it is financially health because it does not require full complement of stuff that is needed for television now when it comes to production of uh, these radio programs you do not need so many people for you to be able to uh, to produce like uh, for example when you are doing uh, or rather when you are gathering information for radio what you require is just to is just um, a recorder and um, just that person who is going to um, be gathering news and that's all so if you are the one who is going to gather um, that information that uh, you're, you're going to use for your radio like a radio newscast will just require one person who can be able to operate and the recorder and then uh, uh, that's all um, next we are saying that uh, it is not a literate medium that unlike the print medium which require ability to read and write radio does not require a literate uh, audience all that it requires is a good ear and good listen ambit now um, this is one of the most well, it is one of the major advantage of radio especially when it comes to a uh, developing world that uh, you realize that a uh, developing world is characterized by um, majority of the people who are not that uh, educated so if at all we want to pass like uh, for example some uh, message some health messages some uh, development messages the best medium now that uh, you find we can be able to use is a radio why is it so it can be able now to enable so many people to be able to um, understand or to be able to acquire this message um, that you want to pass to them okay so that together with uh, the issue of it being inexpensive uh, you realize that it makes so many people to be able to afford it and to be able to receive messages through uh, this kind of medium radio is supplemental medium that are uh, with the radio you don't have um, just to sit there and uh, listen what we are saying here is that with a radio you can be able to do other things as you still listen to that medium okay you can be probably um, 
doing some cl do some cleaning as you listen to radio. You can be doing different uh, tasks as you still uh, listen to your medium or to that radio. Radio is an audio medium. Now, earlier when we were doing some introduction there, we said that uh, there is uh, some of the challenges that comes with our medium. And uh, one of uh, these challenges could be because radio is an audio medium alone. Okay? Meaning that we only rely on the audio, on the sounds that we are receiving from that radio set. Okay? So this means that as a producer of a program for radio, you should be able now to try as much as possible to create the visual images at the back of the mind of the listener through uh, the creative use of words that you are going to pick in um, probably coming up with uh, your script and the like. So just to take you through that, the simplicity of radio implies that producers can design programs without planning for video. It is an audio-only medium. And according to ASEMA 2011, radio is a blind theater. Well, um, now we can look at that as an advantage, as well as a, a, as an, a, as a disadvantage. So as an advantage, you realize that uh, with radio you can be able to create any kind of environment. You can take your listeners to any given place, okay? Because what you need to do is just to create um, those mental images at uh, the different places that you want to, to transfer or that you want to take your listener uh, to. So you achieve that through the different um, sound elements or audio elements like uh, for example the, the effects and um, picking that gift end narrator or uh, the voicer of the different radio programs that you are going to have. Um, next we are saying that our radio messages are transient in nature. And um, you, as you can see, the medium of radio has been described as a fast blacking medium that tells the story first before other medium. So, uh, as we have seen, when it comes to radio, um, uh, it is, you are able to fairly quickly be able to assemble the story together and uh, at the same time be able to disseminate that information to your target audience. Okay? So, with that, you can be able to give that blocking uh, news uh, fairly fast. Now, the other point that is connected to that is that um, it is a medium that cannot be able to wait for you. It is a medium whereby you cannot be able to um, go back and try to get the information that bypassed you. So for you to be able to get that information and make sure that you do not miss anything, then you must make sure that you understand at uh, what time the program will be done and make sure that uh, you are ready there um, with your radio switched it on so that you can be able to get or that information. Otherwise, you realize that you will, uh, once the information bypasses, you have missed that. So now let us look at uh, the principles of writing for radio. And uh, we are saying that um, broadcast script, particularly radio script, measure up to laid down parameters. And uh, these are uh, when you are writing the script, you shouldn't be clear, you shouldn't be concise, complete, shouldn't be conversational, current, and shouldn't be correct. So let us uh, look at uh, each of those principles. The first one is clarity. And uh, we are saying that a clear copy means the writer employs a symbol easy to understand manner to convey the message to the audience. So now, for you to be able to be clear, you know that uh, you are supposed to use language that uh, your target audience are able to understand. And uh, this means that you are going to uh, use those words that they normally use on their daily 
conversations. So in a, such a case, you must make sure that you go for the short words, okay, and avoid any vocabulary. Uh, yeah, avoid any vocabulary that is not within their daily use. So just uh, to go through that, the medium of radio is such that uh, the listener cannot go back to what he or she has missed in any aspect of the program. The only way the listener can follow the, the story is for the writer to develop the story in a logical way. So clarity of thought implies that the script, one, should be clear to avoid misinterpretations. Okay? So you should avoid those words that have more than one meaning, especially when you are, uh, when you are writing for radio. Two, should avoid putting uh, too many thoughts or numbers into one sentence. So for people to be able to understand your message, just stick to one fact at a time. Uh, next, the writer must choose words that everyone will understand. That is, the writer must use words that are within the vocabulary of the listener. And I believe I've talked about that, that uh, when you are writing, go for those words that are in daily use by your listeners. Okay? So if they are technical terms, it is important for you to afford them if uh, you're not, uh, if, uh, you're not in broadcasting for the audience who particularly uses those technical terms. Now, given the fact that radio is meant for everyone, and uh, in most, most cases you're targeting everyone in the society, then we are saying that because your main objective is to communicate, and communication means that the listener or your target audience will be able to understand that message just like the way you intended him to understand, then there is no need for you to use language that they will be struggling to understand. And that's why we are saying that go for uh, those words that everyone will be able to understand. And these words are those ones that they usually use on their daily basis. Next, you use the active rather than the passive voice if you want to be uh, clear. Now, we have an example there of uh, what we mean by active, eh? active voice. For example, MKU, inno um, MKU Innovative Researcher has won the prize. MKU Innovative Researcher has won the prize. So that's a, a statement or a sentence in active voice. What about if it is in passive? Uh, this is how it is going to sound. The prize has been won by MKU Innovative Researcher. So compare the length of the two sentences, you realize that the one that is in active uh, voice is uh, shorter uh, compared to the passive one. So in such a case, you love to realize that when we are writing for radio, we are going, uh, or rather we, we need to make sure that we use fewer words because in radio you do not have so much space. In broadcast, you do not have so much time. Eh? So you must make sure that any words that is not going to, end, to hand more value to the message that you want to communicate, you leave them out. And that's why we are advising that you use the active rather than the passive voice. Next, avoid using slang or jargon. So slang is uh, simply the street language, okay? For example, what here in our country we refer to it as a sheng, um, you realize that not everyone that will be listening to you will be able to understand that kind of language. So the, way, the only way out to make sure that your information is clear and everyone is able to understand what you are saying is to make sure that you afford that as well as you avoid uh, jargons. These are difficult words. Next, uh, it is not, or rather, uh, this is an explanation for that, eh? that uh, it is not every listener that, uh, that are familiar with such slangs, which is why it is advisable to always translate military, technical, legal, and foreign 
terms into uh, easy to understand uh, language. The second principle is you be concise. Now, conciseness means that the writer has eliminated all unnecessary words that add nothing to the message. So you have to make sure that you are directed to the point. And for you to be able to achieve that, we are saying that, one, you get straight to the point. So sometimes you realize that um, at times you may, you may find that uh, the sources of information or those people who are giving you the information that you want to inform people there, they are um, using so many words to describe something that can be described with a few words. So what we are saying is that aim to just using those words that will be able to, dis to describe the situation uh, directly or the situation at once without using so many words. Use short but effective sentences, okay? So you know when it comes to broadcast, um, the words that you are going to write down, the script that you are going to prepare should contain uh, short sentences because short send sentences are easy to, uh, to be announced, to be read out by the broadcast announcer or radio announcer. Next, state only relevant information. So you only provide what? That important information. And avoid repetition. So there's no need when it comes to radio to keep on repeating the same thing. So um, the only point where you can be able to do some uh, repetition is, uh, for example, when you are doing uh, um, kind of a um, discussion show in uh, your radio station whereby you, uh, you realize that some of the listeners could have joined you a little bit uh, late when the program was on so you need to tell them what they are listening to that uh, they are listening to this particular station and uh, their host is this and uh, within the studio within that particular program you are discussing this and this with this kind of uh, guests okay so that is permitted but now keeping on repeating other uh, words you'll not find that in uh, radio so the next principle is uh, complete and uh, as you can see completeness means the script has all the information the audience must know regardless of the genre that the script is addressing it must like news story including it at at least four of the five W's and in some cases, like in drama, include the H. So uh, despite the fact that we've said that um, when you are writing for radio, you must be brief um, and also you must not include so much information, you must make sure that that story that you are delivering to your audience is complete. And it will be complete if you can be able to answer uh, the different uh, questions or the, yeah, the, you can provide all the information based on the five W's and an H. So as we are going to see later, uh, you don't have to compress all that information within the introduction of um, your lead for the case of uh, radio news. So you can start with the, one of the most important, and uh, in this case, it is what that is what happened and where. So the two W's are the most important when you are starting your news story. But make sure that the entire story is complete. You've given all the information that uh, the listener will feel that they, have, they are satisfied with what you've given them. The next um, principle is that uh, you be conversational. Remember that uh, when it comes to radio, um, we are going to be getting the information through listening, okay? So the best way that you can be able to deliver this information is if you can be able to employ what we refer to it as the conversational style. So this means that, um, okay, let us go through that. The principle of having a successful program 
and audience royalty is to write the way you talk. That is just as if you are carrying on a conversation with just one person and not the million lis uh, listening at the other end. Now, um, for you to be able to achieve that, uh, like uh, for example, you realize that uh, when we are talking, um, or rather when we, um, we, we are conversing, eh, most of the time you realize that uh, we use contractions, okay? Uh, like, uh, for example, shouldn't, didn't, didn't, that way. Yeah? So that is as well uh, permitted or allowed when you are writing uh, that script for radio. So, but uh, something that you are supposed to note is that uh, you are not just supposed to be that informal eh? in your, in the tone that uh, you are going to use. You are supposed to be a little bit uh, formal in the language that you are using. Uh, the other principle is being current. So currency in a copy means that the copy is timely and up to date. Currency in drama gives the suggestion of relevance and relatable to the people. Now, when it comes to radio, eh, most of the time you are giving uh, information that has just happened. And it is important for you when you are writing for radio to observe that. So how are you going to ensure that people will feel that uh, this information is happening now or it has just happened? It is by following the following guidelines that are one, you write in the present tense, write in the present tense. Uh, two, use active rather than passive voice as we have uh, seen up there. You keep time uh, references uh, close to the verb. You have an example that we are giving there that uh, today, for example, today the president announced his view on the new tax law. That one is uh, easier to read aloud than a new view on the tax law was announced today by the president. So, like uh, what we had said, eh, when it comes to your writing, you go for active voice if you can. If it is possible, make sure that you go for active voice. Simply because active voice ensures that you use a few words and at the same time you realize that there is a pace that is employed when uh, you're using that kind of uh, uh, style or that kind of uh, voice. Next, you have to ensure that uh, whatever that you are giving to the audience is correct, okay? So this means that uh, your information is uh, factual, your information is accurate, and all that. So just um, have a look at this, that a correct presentation of facts and figures is the hallmark of good journalism, as well as our writing. In achieving this, one, have perfect grammar and spelling, Bad grammar and wrong spellings will make the writer appear incompetent. So you'll have to check for all those grammatical mistakes within your copy before it goes and to be announced. Uh, two, punctuation is absolutely important to expressing the right meaning. So you realize that uh, with the issue of um, punctuation marks, and the commas um, especially, uh, when you put it at the wrong uh, place within your statement, then uh, that state, the meaning of that statement definitely will change. Uh, next, double check. When do you have to double check? You check again and again your script to, en to ensure that there is no any mistake. Next, make sure your facts and uh, figures are accurate. You can round off where necessary. So in the case of numbers, um, you know in a radio, because you are going to be announcing that, uh, make sure that a number that is not easy to be able to be understood, you can be able to round it uh, to a number that is going to be understood. Take for example, like uh, you are talking about the payment um, to some of the workers, and uh, you are saying that they are given something to do with uh, 25, uh, 48, 2,548 shillings 
uh, per month. So we realize that it will be hard for the listener to be able to uh, get to understand that number. So you can uh, simply say that uh, they, these kind of workers are paid less than uh, 2,600 shillings per month. So with that, that kind of information will be able to stick to the mind of the listener. So next, let us uh, look at um, the news script. How do you go about uh, to prepare a news script? Um, we are saying that a news, radio news copy begins with a slug, a slug line that indicates the reporter's last name, the date, the newscast time, a story identification, and the story length. Okay? So when you are preparing your report, um, because you'll be going to the field to cover different news items. So when you are presenting your report in form of a script, there must be something that will be able to tell us that uh, this story is about this, that um, this story will be aired at this particular time. Uh, it, will, it will run for this length, or I mean for this duration of time, and uh, it has been done by this particular uh, journalist. Okay, so we, we will be able to see that on an example that we are going to see uh, shortly. The script is written using the full length of the page and the standard end mark is inserted after the last line. So when uh, you are done with your story, there is uh, a mark that you are supposed to put such that, such that uh, the announcer will be able to know that uh, he or she has come to the end of that particular story and uh, you put that kind of a mark or uh, uh, that number we are seeing there with an even on uh, both sides. When actualities, actualities are recorded sounds of the news event, when they are used, the script includes the length of the actuality and an auto cue, that is out cue. The out cue is the last few words on the tape or DVD so that the newscaster is prepared to begin reading again when the actuality comes to an end. Well, um, you realize that um, most of the news reports or these newscasts, they are comprised of different reports from different uh, events. And for the listener to be able to believe of, for you to have that credibility on the stories that you are giving, you must give us what we are referring to it as the actuality. And I repeat, actuality is the voice or that sound that we can be able to get to hear from the location where the event was taking place. So if it is possible, you make sure that uh, each of the stories that you are going to do is accompanied by an actuality. So let us uh, look at um, an example of a news script. So just like uh, what we have said there, above there, you must be having what we were referring to it as a slug line. And um, you can be able to see here, uh, the first thing that you can be able to see on top, of, on top there is, that is on the, on the left side of uh, the script you'll be able to see that uh, we have the name of that particular event that you are going to cover, and in this case is a chemical explosion. You'll have uh, as well to indicate uh, the time and uh, date when uh, that news item is supposed to be broadcast. And the reason as to why you do that, you, remember, you, you know that uh, once you have uh, prepared the scripts, Maybe the newscaster can be able to come to the studio a little bit late and just pick the scripts and start uh, announcing the news items. So to ensure that uh, the announcer will not be mistaken and um, read some of the news scripts or news reports that had already gone on air, maybe last week or uh, maybe, the, in, um, maybe last night or the previous day, that's why you're supposed to include the date and at the same time indicate the 
the time that uh, that news item is supposed to be broadcasted. So with that, when the announcer says that we'll be certain that this news item is supposed to be uh, announced at that particular uh, moment. So again there, you indicated the person who has uh, done the news coverage, and in our case is J. Peter. Now on the right side of the column, you indicate the duration of that news item, and in our case, it is taking 45 seconds. So once you have done that, now you can be able to include or to give uh, your report. And uh, we, was, we are saying that uh, when you are writing your script, make sure now that your report is able to run the entire page. You can be able to say that it is running from the left margin to the right margin. So after you've done that, sometimes you find that now you have an actuality. And as we had said, an actuality is now the voice or recording from the event, whatever it was taking place. And you wanted to insert that within your uh, news report. So if you have to do that, there, um, you'll have to indicate what kind of uh, an insert is that. And uh, within the start, there will be those words that will be said or that will be played from that DVD or that tape. Uh, it is supposed to indicate the time that uh, that actuality runs. And at the same time, it is supposed to indicate the last few words that will be heard from that uh, actuality. So the importance of you doing that is to ensure that the announcer will be alerted that uh, that actuality is about to end so that he can be prepared to give the last bit of or rather to go and uh, continue announcing. So once we are done with the actuality, now the announcer can be able to finish the remaining part. Okay, uh, as you can see there. Then once that item ends, you remember to put this kind of mark on your script that alerts the announcer that that news item has come to an end. So that's a, a sample script for a radio news, uh, I mean for a radio news item. Now let us uh, look at uh, something else, how we organize now the, the news script. So broadcast news copy is organized in a pyramid style meaning the most important points of the story are given in a concise lead sentence and then the remaining details of the story are given in a descending order of importance. Now, when you look at um, the way we do news for print media, for newspapers and magazine, we usually start in most cases with the most important. Okay. Then uh, we move to the second most important, moving all the way to the least important. But now when it comes to red use clips, as we had said, you're supposed to present the information in a conversational style. So there's no way that you can be able to follow the inferted style that is followed when it comes to the case of newspapers. Why is it so? Because now there's no way that uh, we usually talk like that. There's no way that uh, we usually start with the most important um, uh, information within our story. Then as you are narrating to your friends, you move from that most important to the second most important to the least. Okay? That does not happen. And um, we are saying that uh, we love to replicate how we usually communicate in our normal situations so that uh, when it comes to radio, so that our listeners can be able to understand everything that we are uh, broadcasting to them. So in the newspapers, um, we are saying that uh, the news story is told by giving them basic who, what, where, where, when, why, and how. Um, in information in fairly short, simple sentences that are easy to read, loud. So in the case of newspapers, we try to give all this information within the first uh, sentence, 
But now when it comes to uh, radio, we only pick one of these and we we'll have to ensure that it is the most important so that now we can be able to feature that within our opening sentence or our introduction and now make sure that uh, we can be able now to give other information on the later part of now the story um, starting with probably the least important moving now to the most important. Um, we are saying that uh, in contrast to broadcast newscasters, newspaper reporters include as many facts, who, what, when, where, why, how, as possible in the first sentence. And I believe I explained that, that uh, when it comes to the newspaper uh, reports, you'll be able to find that uh, the newspaper reporters will be able to include the five W's and an H within their lead sentence or within their introduction, which is um, contrary to what we do in the case of uh, uh, radio, okay, where we start with the most important, which in most cases it is uh, what happened and where it happened. Then the other information we give it later following the, uh, the pyramid style. So the other point there is telling you what happens in the case of newspapers, that uh, the entire newspaper can trim the copy from the bottom up to fit the space available without losing important information. Now this style of writing, known as the inverted pyramid in newspapers, will not work in broadcast because it is awkward to read. Uh, no one really talks that way and the listener would not, or rather, the listener would get confused. So we are saying that uh, you cannot be able to employ that style that is used in newspapers when you are reporting, or, or rather when you are writing a script for, uh, for broadcast, more so radio. So when you are writing for broadcast news and are more so radio, remember to keep it short and symbol. That is uh, what we refer to it as uh, the key principle. So let us see what you are supposed to do when you are organizing the radio newscast. Uh, you realize that uh, there are different uh, stories that are news um, broadcaster or um, that journalist who is going to the field to cover. Uh, some of those stories that uh, this broadcasting journalist covers will be part of the newscast for that particular day. So once we receive these different stories, we we'll love to select them based on um, uh, a criteria that has been established in the media house. And in most cases, it's based on the value of news and the target audience that are that particular media house targets, okay? So, uh, news values are like uh, issues to do with uh, proximity, prominence, uh, timely, and alike. So we look at that and then we as well check whether that story will be of much value to the target audience in terms of uh, interest, in terms of uh, relevance, and alike. Next, the final stories for the newscast are selected by the news, news director based on a uh, news value and the target audience. Once the stories are selected, their order is determined. So now, once uh, these stories have been selected, you know, um, we've said that uh, when you're selecting those stories, uh, you consider the value of news and two, your target audience. So once you have selected those stories, again, you'll have to ask yourself, how are you going to organize uh, these news items, okay? So uh, depending on your media house, you realize that uh, some of the media houses goes ahead and organizes those news. Probably um, if the area of coverage, probably it's um, uh, national, then they are going to identify those stories that are touching on people locally. They first start with those stories, then they can go and now um, broadcast the other international newsletter okay so that's uh, what we are covering with this some stations may first 
rather if all the news is being produced locally local news will usually come first unless there is a national or international story of major significance some stations may first air a network newscast that covers the national and international news and then follow that with a complete local um, report so when you're organizing your stories for radio then first go and, and uh, consult what we refer to it as um, um, the standards that have been set in uh, your media house okay and uh, within your media house you realize that there is a policy or now you're supposed to do the news to organize the news items it could be by you starting with the local news uh, and uh, in most cases this depends on the um, region that your uh, station covers next we are saying that uh, each station determines the overall structure each station determines the overall structure its newscast will follow okay Usually, uh, traffic and weather are important aspects of the newscast, especially during uh, the drive time. Okay, so this is the time that uh, uh, people are going to work as well as driving uh, from work. Okay, so around um, seven to eight and around from two to maybe five, six. There, we refer to that time as um, drive and drive time. So people want to be given some information pertaining traffic, okay, so that they can be able to know uh, which roads they can be able to use. They need to be informed about the issue of weather, for example, when they are leaving from their house, so that they can know um, how they can be able to dress and alike. Next is uh, sports. <coughs> um, sports stock market reports and health reports have also become important factors in uh, news content but inclusion depends on the station's target audience okay so um, apart from uh, those uh, apart from what we refer to it as anti news uh, you realize that uh, there are those other reports that are touching on sports and uh, issues to do with um, the business or what we are referring to it as a uh, stock market health reports you, you know, you do wish to be able to give this information to your target audience, but again, we are saying that uh, it will depend on the position of uh, your station in regards to what they are supposed to, or rather, to what the station is supposed to be um, broadcasting to their target audience. Next, the length of individual news stories vary from about 10 seconds to two minutes the shorter stories are usually straight uh, straight reading and are preferred for radio now you realize that uh, when it comes to radio uh, you do not have all the time like in the case of the newspapers and um, and uh, television reason being that uh, people's concentration will not last that long so the much that they can be able to concentrate is uh, for example for 10 minutes okay so the newscast program should not go beyond 10 minutes okay but uh, nowadays we usually even go for a shorter duration of an average of five minutes so what does that tell you that are the reduced uh, news items should be short okay and uh, that's why we are saying that uh, most of them should be able to average at around um, let's say something to do with uh, that 30 seconds so that you can be able to do a number of news items and um, that point that I've just said uh, is being explained there that uh, in broadcast journalism time is important if stories are that seconds each the number of stories that won't be covered in a five minute radio newscast is only 10 so it won't be important uh, if you can be able to have uh, some of the stories that are shorter than even those, those that seconds so again you'll have to 
take note that if commercials have to be included within that uh, newscast, then the number of stories again will have to be reduced. So since radio is an uh, uh, <coughs> since radio is an auditory medium, radio news should employ as many actualities as possible. And um, we mentioned that earlier that for us to be credible, for your stories to be believed by your listener, you must bring those reports or those audio, um, audio clips from uh, the field and insert them within your newscast. Okay, we have an example down there. Uh, for example, during a radio news story about reorganization of Njumbili Party, an actuality might consist of uh, comments by a Njumbili Party representative. So we are assuming that uh, you have gone ahead to talk to um, this representative when there was uh, that reorganization of the party. So uh, for us to believe in whatever that you are telling us, you must include that actuality that are features that uh, Jumbili party representative um, talking to uh, US, the radio reporter there. So again, we are saying that uh, another way to get sound other than the Angus voice into a newscast is to have the radio reporter call into the station and record a voice. This is a news report from the scene of the event. Now, um, when uh, we are reporting or when um, we have sent our broadcast reporters, our news, our radio news reporters in the field, at times, apart from just getting the actuality from um, the representative from wherever they have gone to cover that news event, they would as well want to inform us that they are there and uh, they are reporting for this particular uh, station. So when uh, we include that, that's uh, what we are referring to it as a voice. The audio of our reporter from the field, we are the one, it is the one that we are referring to it as the voice. So when we combine the voice and the actuality, we get what we refer to it as the wrap. We wrap up, eh? uh, combine um, the voice, uh, or rather the actuality, that is the, the sound from, or the audio from, uh, the location where the event was taking place, and then you combine that with the sound of the reporter who is covering that particular event. So when you combine that, you are saying that you will refer to that as the wrap. Um, next, at the end of the actuality, the news person needs to let the people back to the station know that the story is finished. And uh, this is usually done by giving a tagline that, uh, that, a tagline that closes the story. And a standard closing line, um, usually something like, I have an example there. For example, if um, we are having our reporter that we refer, um, our reporter who goes by, the name uh, Lucy Mwende. We can um, have something like this. For MKU Radio, this is uh, Lucy Mwende reporting from a parliament building. So with that, when, um, when the anger hears that, that um, this person is coming to an end, or rather, this is just a way of alerting the news announcer that that report is coming to an end uh, by having uh, this person give us that kind of a line, okay, which we are referring to it as uh, the last tagline. Next, the news anger must be aware that when for MKU dot dot is add it is the queue to get ready to announce again. So when um, that, con that uh, announcer, the one who is doing the news, um, when he is or she is listening um, to the reporter's uh, report, which we are referring to it as uh, the wrap-up, and uh, the reporter says that 
for this particular station, okay, uh, the the announcer knows that the end of that actuality has come to an end, and uh, he or she shouldn't be prepared to continue the announcing. Again, we are saying that uh, since much of what we hear in the news is uh, seri um, is mostly serious, even sometimes in depressing information, radio or television newscast frequently tries to end with a kicker story. And a kicker story uh, is a humorous or human interest story that may put a smile on the listener's uh, face. Okay? So, because you are serious right from the start of the newscast, um, now when you are ending, you must make people at least smile or leave them happy. And then uh, you can now get that story that is uh, full of humor or that is of human interest. And uh, we have an example of such uh, there. So that uh, brings us to our end of lesson today. So see you next time. These televised lectures supplement our robust online learning going on on our MKU online platform. You can view more on our televised lectures via our online platform. We are in a digital era and Mount Kenya University knows this. The following are the steps to follow so as to complete your online application. Download the application form from the website www.mku.ac.ke Attach copies of your academic certificates and ID. Pay the application fees via M-Pesa pay bill number 270988. Your ID is the account number. 2,000 shillings is the charge for a postgraduate. You can also deposit in the bank accounts provided on the website. Then email all the above to apply at mku.ac.ke.